and into our worship space on this Sunday, September 26th. For announcements, the first thing I would like to say is that I am officially now installed as your pastor and teacher for Eden Presbyterian Church and Osage United Church of Christ. <laughs> Someone asked me yesterday, Dixie, why did we wait so long? And I said, you know, I could have given you a flippant answer and said, I was just trying out, just to see if it was gonna work. No, uh, with COVID and we weren't meeting, I wanted to make sure we were safer, and um, so that's why we took almost a year to make that happen, and I was excited and glad we did because it was a wonderful worship yesterday, and if you didn't get a chance to watch it or be there, it is on our Facebook page, so you can go back and watch it anytime at your leisure. Tomorrow night, I do have an Iowa board meeting with United Church of Christ at 5 o'clock. Uh, it, it's via Zoom, so I'll be at home watching that. Uh, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the sock sale. The wind got me wrapped into working that, so I'll be working at 11 o'clock until 3 on Friday. And then on Sunday, October 3rd, is our World Communion Sunday. And uh, that's Sunday where everybody in the church buildings will be celebrating communion across Across the world and we will also be collecting a justice and peace offering for the Presbyterian Church and that offering helps with um, women and children ministries along with um, I believe there's some um, help with education in that along with other justice and witness programs and before you come up, Dean, we need to play happy birthday because we have a 75th birthday in this congregation this morning. And so, Judy, we want to wish you a happy birthday and sing to you today. You don't have it? All right, so you're going to do an acapella. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Is it all right if you folks I take my mask off? Okay, thank you. Okay, last week, with Carol's help, we finally got a house built. But now I'm going to do what Paul Hollerby always did, was the rest of the story. On the 14th of August, there was an earthquake that went through Haiti, and the majority of the properties were destroyed by the earthquake. So I called Church World Service and I asked them about the houses that we had built. And lo and behold, guess what? All of our houses, according to Church World Sur Service and the, the medical centers and the schools that we helped build with concrete block buildings, survived. These survived. And these survived. So now you have the rest of the story. Thank you, Carol, for helping me last week. <laughs> and I appreciate the fact that I got an opportunity to share with you the fact that our construction did survive that earthquake. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Dean. I think those are all the announcements this morning. Uh, so let us center ourselves to remember that we're here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for all who are able, you please stand and join in our call to worship. If it has not been for the Lord, who was on our side, when the weather patterns changed and tornadoes, hurricanes, and wildfires came out of nowhere, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, when the floodwaters came into our homes and flooded our fields, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, when life happened and things did not go as we planned, where would we be? How would we make it through? So let us worship the one who is always on our side. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And let us rejoice and sing our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, hymn number 356, and we're going to sing 1, 3, and 5.
anyone who has committed sin will be forgiven. Therefore, let us come and confess our sin to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. And let us pray. Merciful God, it is foolish to presume that you will intervene every time we are in trouble. But sometimes we do. We live as though misery should never find our home address, that sorrow should never sit at our doorstep. Forgive us, God, for those times we have taken you for granted. We have taken credit for your interventions. We have blamed you, blamed one another, or even blamed ourselves for the suffering in our world. Forgive us, God and teach us how to weep with those who weep, and to rejoice with those who rejoice. Amen. Though we wander from the truth, God brings us back and saves our souls from death. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and we give thanks to God. Amen. Salt is good, and if you lose that saltiness, how can you make it salt? 
salty again. And he says, have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. We're called to be salt in the world, which means we need, we need to flavor that world with the love of Jesus and to be led by him in making the world a better place. So I'm going to pick on my sister for a minute because she goes, Dixie, people are using salty as a term for somebody who is sassy. So is it the same? Or is it different? And she's like, i got to listen to your sermon a little bit closer now because I need to figure out what that all means today. So I want you to think about that. Does salty mean sassy? Or is sassy something different? And that salty has become not what Jesus meant us to, to be. So I'm going to give that to you today as our children's lesson. And we're going to turn into our scripture to Mark chapter 9. Verses 38 to 50. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put something, if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another, for this is the word of the Lord. And let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks today, and we ask for that Holy Spirit of yours to be in our hearts and our minds. We thank you for having the Spirit here in our music and in our liturgy. We just now ask for that Spirit to open our ears to hear that message that you have for us this day. And Lord, I ask may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Chicken Little comes running to the king and says, we need to go and do something about this. And along the way, she runs into some of her friends. You know them, Penny Penny, Turkey Lurkey, Goosey Lucy, and Ducky Lucky. And there are variations of those characters in the story, but I'm going to use the 1943 short film where the author describes Penny Penny as the one who just loves to sit around with her friends and poke their beaks into everyone else's business and pluck people to pieces. And then we have Turkey Lurkey and her sisters who just sit around all day drinking tea and discuss what's going on with the world and try to solve all the world's problems. That would be me, even though I never solved any of those world problems. And then we have Lucy, Lucy and Ducky Lucky and all they do, they're just thirsty. They just drink all day long. <laughs> you know, before worship, See, Susie, though, you're telling me to smile. The thing is, I concentrate and try to remember what I'm going to say next. So 
So what's next is that none of these characters that I just named paid any attention to Chicken Little, because they just thought Chicken Little was a little odd. She just didn't get it. She wasn't one of the groups, and so, but yet, the problem was Chicken Little bought into Foxy Loxy, and we all know as adults, Foxy Loxy is sly and always trying to find a way to lead the good ones astray. So Chicken Little was good, but she got caught up. How many of us get tricked by maybe what is told to us or what we read on a daily basis or what we see online, especially these days, and think, is that really true? And the thing is, we only get parts of the story. Just like scripture, think about that for a minute. We read only parts of the story, because if we, I mean, we would be here forever if we read from Genesis to Revelation, let me tell you. But every week we get pieces of what Jesus is trying to teach us. But yet we also know people out there that take pieces of those scriptures and sometimes use it against us. And so Chicken Little wasn't really wanting to use anything against anybody. She just bought into the idea that the sky was going to fall and that somebody needed to be warned. And so when evil takes over or when somebody sly takes over in our lives, it's hard. It's hard to get back. It's hard to remember that we're the salt of the world. Now, even though I didn't read Numbers and James this morning, I'm going to bring them into to this scripture, to this lesson a little bit, because I want to highlight a part in Numbers that speaks about God being angry and about Moses being displeased with his call in life. And so in Numbers 11, verse 10, it says, Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families and at the entrances of their tents. And then the Lord became very angry and Moses was displeased. So what was going on was they were wandering around the desert for 40 years and the people were ready to settle. And Moses was ready to throw it all away because he had enough of the complaining and the listening and he would reach out to God and God would just be angry too because it says that the Lord's anger was kindled and then the fire of the Lord burned against them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp and then Moses prayed to him and, and the fire stopped. What they understood at that point then is that when we pray to God, when things are just kind of going astray and maybe we're led astray, God is going to bring us back. He's going to take care of us no matter how much we complain. He's going to take care of us. And so they, but what they did was they traded their trust in God and they became great greedy. Because if you remember, God was providing them with manna every single day. And at one point, they were so hungry, they thought, we're going to put them in our pockets and take it home. Well, then the next day, the worm came and ate the manna, and they became angry. And then they're like, well, we want meat. We want more to sustain us. And Moses said, no, quit being greedy. God never asked Moses to feed all the people, because, or at least feed the people meat because they didn't need the meat in the first place. It's kind of like when we go into this temptation of sin about these stumbling blocks. You know, I read that for the first time this, well, not the first time, but it triggered those things in my head this week about, you know, there's been many times that I've probably accidentally, well, uh, UCO, I've slapped him for no reason because he was driving me crazy. I should probably cut that hand off according to scripture. Or I've stumbled or walked into a situation where I probably shouldn't have been and got caught up in the moment. And then according to this, it says that I should be on one leg or maybe no legs. And how many of us 
and how our eyes wander away. When I sat in confirmation a few years ago, one of my mentors said, Dixie, you can't tell me that when I think another woman is beautiful, that I'm sinning. And according to scripture, that is exactly what it means when you have eyes wander. In this day and age, it's hard to comprehend that because we want to think that a man is beautiful and gorgeous and we might salivate over that a little bit. Or on the other side, a man will look at a woman and think, oh man, she's really hot. And according to scripture, it says, poke that eye out. Because you're stumbling and you're getting away from the fact that we are all people of God and that God is going to take care of us, especially when we start to sin and fall. And the same thing happened in Chicken Little's story. All of these people, Henny Penny, Turkey Lurkey, Goosey Moosey, Ducky Lucky, they turn to their leader, the rooster, named Kaki Laki, and they started listening to Chicken Little, who was actually listening to Foxy Loxy, the voice of evil. And they start to integrate all this probably not right thing, and they start to look up thinking that the sky is going to fall. Or when it's starting to rain, they're like, oh my gosh, the sky is falling. And yet what they were forgetting was they're together. They're in this together. And that's what the book of James brings us to. And the book of James was written by Jesus' younger brother. And he's talking to his community in this practical, down-to-earth way about prayer. The most simplest form of showing how we can be a Christian to pray. And he is reminding us that the church is to be this healing community. We're to care for the sick, the suffering. We're to pray for each other, to anoint each other with oil. To pray for forgiveness within people's hearts and between people so that there will be healing and to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another so that we all may be healed. James says that if certain people wander away from Christ, we're to bring them back to the community that is of compassion and healing. It's not hard to think about that. It's a simple primary issue that we face every day. And that is the very concept of being a Christian. Welcome them all into the fold. And from Chicken Little's standpoint, it seems to me that the gossip group, the group trying to solve the world's problems, and all the drinkers just really need to take note of, those, of who is in the barnyard and stop and pray for them instead of talking about them or ignoring them or buying into the fact that the sky is actually falling. Because according to Mark and according to Jesus, we become the salt. John is complaining to Jesus that somebody is out there doing something in Jesus' name and he wants it to stop because they aren't actual followers of Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, but they are. They are doing it in my name. They are following me. So don't discourage it. If somebody is on the street and you see somebody else praying for them, you're not going to stop that person from praying just because they aren't worshiping at Eden or Osage or your church of choice, people following online. You're going to accept it. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. And then Jesus says, whoever does that is doing a good deed in my name and will not lose the reward of eternal life. 
He encourages us to stand with those that are out there on the front line fighting for whatever right is needing to be fulfilled. And it doesn't mean that they are against us. It doesn't mean that we're against them. It means that if they are in the right, in Jesus' name, we should go and follow them and be with them and support them and not be upset because, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that first. And then we become that saltiness. And I wouldn't say that we're sassy when we talk about Jesus loving me or we talk about our faith to others who are listening. Because if we aren't working for the kingdom of God, then what are we doing? We need to be working together. And we should be doing it without turf wars, without anybody saying, well, that's wrong or that's not right, as long as we're together. We find peace and understanding, and we find that love and that forgiveness and grace that God gives us. So be salt. And if it comes out as sassiness, then it's sassiness. But to me, sassiness is more of a trigger point of maybe anger or something that doesn't give us the right to say or I don't know how to even explain it. Because I think when we have salt in our life, we're saying it out of genuine conviction that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, that God is the Father and the Holy Spirit is that fire that never ends. And when we combine that, the truth, the love, and ourselves with the body of Christ, we can hear Jesus say, we are the salt of the world. And we can preserve and bring out that beauty of faith. A faith that proclaims peace among all. And we give thanks for God for giving that message to us today. Amen. Our hymn of response is out of our hymnal number 526, Trusting Jesus.
<clears throat> so today and every day we see signs of God's grace and abundance, and we also know that there is suffering and need in the world. We ask that you give freely of what you have been given as a witness of God's actions in the world. And please do so as you leave this morning. And for those watching, we ask that you please be sure to send your offerings and tithes into Eden Presbyterian Church or whatever home church you may belong to because your offerings are blessed and they continue to help serve the communities. Amen. Thank you for the many, many opportunities. 
opportunities we have to worship you, to be here in this worship space together and online together. Lord, we thank you for the birthdays and the anniversaries that you bless your presence with. And Lord, we just thank you for being a part of our life, that we're able to come and be this family of God that you wanted and created. But most of all, we come and celebrate your son, Jesus Christ. And we come to you, Lord, with the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as you are able, if you would please stand and join in our closing hymn, number 710. 710, we are called to be God's people.